My name is Lance Lysing. I'm a supervisory special agent with the FBI. I supervise the Violent Crime Squad. So, uh, as response, uh, part of our responsibilities on the Violent Crime Squad would be to respond to active shooter incidents. But more importantly, I'm also an instructor with the FBI, and we instruct in all phases of active shooter from prevention prior to it happening, to tactical response, to incident command, to recovery. There's a wide variety of what you should be doing prior to any active shooter incident happening and to, to protect yourself from being a victim in an active shooter incident. The first thing is that everybody, no matter where you are, in a school, in an office place, everybody has an obligation to make a plan. If you if you're, have oversight over an office building or a college campus, you have an obligation to protect those students or those employees at those places. And in order to do that, you have to make a plan. Without a plan, people will be helpless and eventually it'll dissolve into no action rather than action. You need to act, so you need to prepare. It, you, a lot of people fall into a victim mentality where they feel like all I can do is fall down and hide. And that is absolutely what we don't want people to do. It falls into the run, hide, fight mantra that we try to um, promote. You're not a victim. Everybody has a role in any type of active shooter incident. It might be to report a suspicious activity prior to something happening. It might be to run, to get away. It might be to hide and barricade and prevent um, somebody from having access into an area, and eventually it might be to fight. But everybody's got a role. You're not a victim. The first phase of run, hide, fight, which is run, it's get yourself away from the danger. And that's what we promote initially, uh, that's what we recommend. Studies have shown that the people who just get away, get out and get away, report it and get to someplace safe, that's the highest chance of surviving any type of active shooter situation. The second, if you cannot run, if you cannot get away safely, maybe you feel like exits are booby trapped or there's other, you don't know where the suspect is or there might be other suspects that you don't know where they are and you don't feel like you can run, you wanna hide. Hiding is fine, but don't just hide in plain sight. Don't just get on the ground and feel like I can hide under this desk. Try to hide in a place where you can bar barricade, you can defend, you can put push furniture up against it. You can turn the lights out, silence your cell phones. You can act like nobody's in there. Studies have shown that a lot of these perpetrators are looking for easy targets. They're gonna move quickly through these settings and look for easy targets. If you barricade and prevent them from having access to that area, they're gonna move to the next. So that's a good way to protect yourself. All right, finally, if you can't run or hide, we recommend fight. And that's with any improvised weapon that you could find in an area. And it's simply, I'm not gonna be a victim. I'm gonna protect myself, protect my coworkers, my fellow students, I'm gonna protect others by stopping this person from injuring myself or others. So I'm, I'm gonna fight. No, I'm choosing not to be a victim. So when the first responders get there, and you'll know that, you'll know by the commands, you'll know by what you're hearing other people say, you might know by social media on your phone or other text messages that the school is putting out or that your office place is putting out, but when they get there, you need to comply. Hands up, um, slow movements, nothing quick, nothing towards your hands or pockets, because they're still worried that you might be a suspect. So they're trying to confirm that. They, they're gonna probably want a quick search, maybe a quick pat down search before they put you in an area where they know it's safe, and you're gonna move to that area. If it gets to the point where the shooting stops or the violence stops, and you feel it's safe to come out and maybe help treat people who are wounded, we recommend doing that too, but only when you feel it's safe. Unfortunately, in our culture, we should all be aware of this. Actively worried, I think, is, is going too far. I mean, I think we all go through our lives with a potential of danger every, every day, everywhere, but we, we can't let it stop us living our lives. And we definitely don't promote worry or don't promote um, over undue concern. But what we do promote is awareness. Understand where you are and understand your role in any kind of situation like that. Understand where the exits are. Understand who you can call.